What's up everyone, I'm Max, and if you're watching this video, then you're probably thinking about buying an EF Civic Hatch. And you probably have a lot of questions, and that is why I'm making this video. I am going to make a detailed explanation on what you should look for before you buy one of those. This is something I definitely wish that I had before I bought this, but uh, that's why I'm making this, and so hopefully I can answer your guys' questions if you don't know what you're looking for before you buy one. So let's go ahead, let's jump right into it. <laughs> The first thing you need to know is that there are different versions of this car depending on what country you live in. And the differences between the two are actually quite significant. So this is a DX model, and I'm gonna tell you right now if you're looking at buying a EF Civic hatch. And when people say EF, they're just referring to this chassis because the G the holy shit. One of the most important things that you need to know before buying one of these is that there are two different trims of the EF chassis here in the United States, and that is the ED6 version and the ED6 SI version. It's not a true EF9. In Japan, they got the EF9 Civic hatch, which is a Civic SIR. And basically what that is, is it's this chassis with um, probably some more reinforcements and stuff, but it came with a B16 engine. The B16 is a very strong engine, a very desirable engine, and it is quite hard to find. But that is what the Japanese version is known for. This came with something a little different. We got two different engine types here in the United States. So let's take a look at what I have right here and why you don't buy the one that I have. So this car came with a D15 B2 engine. And the difference between this and the other one is that the other one came with a D16A6 engine. The D15 B2 engine is a 1.5 liter engine and it comes with the dual point injection, which means it has two fuel injectors coming from the air intake right here, as you can see. But the difference between that and the D16 engine is the D16 is a 1.6 liter engine, but it came with four fuel injectors and it came with something called multi-point fuel injection, which has a different intake manifold and throttle body um, and works much better than what this has. And so that's why I'm making this video is because if you are looking at buying a EF hatch here in the United States, and when I say EF, it's just most people refer to this chassis type as the EF here in the US, even though it's truly known as the ED6 version. But anyways, if you are looking at buying an EF hatch here in the United States, I highly recommend do not buy one that has a D15 B2 engine. In it. That is exactly what this car has, and I have had nothing but problems since owning this car. Granted, this one is a D16 Y7 block, which the previous owner swapped. I don't know if they did it correctly or whatnot. Partially my fault because I didn't do enough research and I didn't know any better when I was a young kid when I bought this car, and I have very, very, very quickly learned that this was a mistake purchase. If you are looking at a Civic and someone has done a Frankenstein swap with a bunch of parts, I would highly recommend avoid it. Do not buy it. And the reason for that is you don't know what they've done. You don't know how skilled they are. You don't know if they know what they are talking about or what they're doing. And you could very well find yourself in the position that I'm in, which is I have constantly been chasing problems, trying to fix this previous owner's issues because they didn't know what they were doing and they wanted to make something and they couldn't figure it out. And so that is exactly why they sold this car. They just wanted to get rid of it because they couldn't figure out their problems. Me, not knowing any better, should have done my research, knows that uh, you should absolutely not buy a car that is in this state or in this position. That doesn't mean the D15 B2 is necessarily a bad engine, but it definitely is not one of Honda's best engines that they've made. I would say it's probably towards the bottom of the engines that they've made. From what I hear on the forums, this is an extremely unreliable engine. It does not work very well. It has massive idle problems all the time. And people seemingly have nothing but issues with the D15 B2 engine. So if you are planning on buying an EF hatch, buy one that has a D16 engine in it or 
has already had the MPFI swap done to it. Now this actually may be easier than you may think if you're new to this because a lot of people have done this already. This is not something new to the Honda world. This has been done for 20 years. So there are plenty of EF examples out there that already have the multi-point fuel injection swap done to them. And so if you are able to find one of those, you are gonna save yourself a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Now, the good thing about this car is that it already came with a bunch of parts on it. So it's not the end of the world that I made this purchase. Um, and for the price that I got it for, I really can't complain all that much. Prices are not what they used to be. Cars are very expensive nowadays. And so me being able to find this for what I found it for is not as bad as it could have been. The modern market, this would not be something that I would buy. I was very lucky to get this for the price that that I got it at. And so I have done plenty of videos on this channel of driving this car. And so I won't be driving this car in this video. Um, you can watch one of my other videos if you wanna do that. But what I will go over today is the type of space and things to expect from owning this car because you have to keep in mind at the end of the day, this is a 30, 35 year old car. This is not a modern machine. And so you will very quickly find that out once driving this is that this is a 30 year old car. It will rattle, it will squeak, it will do a ton of sounds that you probably aren't used to. Now, even if your EF does have problems, you do have to remember that this is a Honda and Hondas very rarely shut off and don't turn back on. Hondas are known for, even if they do freak out and shut off, it will always turn back on and it will always somewhat run and be able to get you home. So even though this car has had problems and this D15 has been absolutely terrible to own, it has never left me stranded anywhere. It has always turned back on and I have always been able to drive it back to my house even if it's having a temper tantrum. And so that's a very important thing to keep in mind with this car is that I don't know if you could call that reliability, but it sure as hell is a testament to Honda to at least keep the car running. And so that's another thing to keep in mind is that I actually haven't had any other mechanical problems with this car. Everything else besides the air and fuel system on this car has worked perfectly fine. I've never had a problem with anything else on this car. My transmission has been great, throttle, brake, gas, all, all that type of stuff. Everything's been fine. Now, the last thing I wanted to go over actually was what you should pay for this type of car. The market is nuts nowadays. And I don't want anyone watching this video to overpay for a Civic. And of course, it's gonna vary depending on where you live. There is a certain price point these cars should be sold for and what you should pay for one. And I would highly advise you don't pay over this. I paid $4,000 for this car when I bought it. The market has completely changed nowadays and you almost can't even find a running and driving car clean for $7,000 nowadays. If it, especially if it has the D15 in it and they haven't done the MPFI swap, I would not pay more than $4,000. I think anything more than that is quite frankly, just too high. If you're gonna buy one that has a D16 in it or has a B-series swap, I would say give or take 5,500 to 6,000 is a good range for it, depending on how clean the body is. If the body's really clean, that person's probably gonna be asking between seven and 8,000 but I would not pay more than 7,000. That would be my line where I would draw it. This is where things get really expensive. If you are planning on buying the SIR, that's gonna cost you a lot of money. That's gonna be over $15,000, probably even into the 20s. We do not have a lot of SIRs over here. We never got the SIR trim that they got in Japan. So anyone that you do have here is gonna be one that's been imported. You have the United States, right-hand drive tax, which is just any car imported from Japan that gets resold over here is sold for way more than what it's actually worth. Simply because of the fact that the car has the steering wheel on the right side. And this is something that I may make another video on, but that is a very important thing to watch out for. Do not overpay for one of these cars. At the end of the day, this is a 30 year old car. It has old technology in it. As cool as it is to drive, as cool as it looks, as awesome as it handles, it still is 30 years old at the end of the day. But anyways, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. I just wanted to make a quick thing there just to show you guys what to look for if you know nothing about Honda Civics and you wanna buy this car. Just a couple things to look out for before you buy one. Of course, there are plenty other videos on there that 
do the history of this car and all that and uh, I won't be going over that in this video I just wanted to make this one specific point you need to pay attention to what engine your Civic has before you buy it that is the most important thing by far no questions about it and so that is going to be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate you guys so much thank you for all the comments on the videos recently be sure to order a sticker from the store at Briscoe Garage dot com and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.